folks this is a new video about using spatial sound with the IEM ambisonics package in Reaper uh, sending data from Max today I want to expand on the last video about specialization and in particular I want to uh, find ways to save my spatial data in in the score and then send the spatial data to uh, Reaper using a higher resolution than last time. This time I will, will use a 14-bit resolution and we'll see how that works. Uh, then we're gonna use a different encoder this time. We're not gonna use the stereo encoder, but the um, uh, room encoder, which is a little more intuitive since it uses uh, Cartesian coordinates instead of uh, spherical coordinates, which is what I used last time. Um, and then I also want to be able to manipulate the position of the listener. So first of all, let's see what the piece that I'm working on looks like. This piece was actually uh, composed for a chamber orchestra and I'm using the score to create a spatial uh, score. start working with one voice just to understand how the mechanism of assigning um, spatial data to each note works. I extracted just one voice and I want to be able to grab each one of these notes and assign a specific value to each note. In particular I want to assign a 3D position to these notes. We need to start talking about slots. So slots are um, data that I can of different kinds that I can assign to each note. And um, by default, I think I have nine available slots and I think that can be changed. So what I can do is just select a note and then press uh, numbers on my keyboard. Each slot can contain a different data type. For instance, slot two is a um, function. It's like the, the function object in Max uh, where I can just create an envelope, for instance, if I want. Um, the sl slot three is an integer list. Slot four is a floating point list. Slot five is just an integer, a single integer. Uh, uh, slot six is a, a floating point. 
and so on and so forth. There are many different kinds that I can use, but for this, um, for the purpose of saving spatial data, I'm only going to use the third slot, which is uh, the integer list. And in particular, I'm only going to use three integers, which are going to be my X, Y, and Z position in space. And I chose to use an integer list because I need to send this data via MIDI anyway. So um, uh, my range is going to be limited to uh, 0 to 127 with the caveat of adding the 14-bit resolution, which we will talk about in a minute. So I'm going to um, have to, what I'm going to have to do is to select each of one of these notes and add a um, 3D position. I could use an Uzi object, but the Uzi object will not allow us to really do an iteration on this because the Uzi will not wait for the slot to be assigned. There is some internal uh, mechanism in backroll where the Uzi uh, does not wait enough let's put it that way, does not wait enough uh, time for, for the values to be assigned to the slot. Uh, so uh, for that, I build an object that is very simple, but very useful in this case. And uh, it's a Nuzi defer low, uh, which is it implements the Uzi uh, idea, but at a low priority. One thing that we need to do before we even get to assign the slots is to know how many notes there are in this uh, score. Get num chords will give us the number of chords. That will be the um, the number of iteration that I need to do. So let's say I want to have this uh, melody um, rotate around me uh, over the over the duration of the score. So I want the first uh, note to be the beginning of the circle and the set the last note to be the end of the circle so where it, it uh, circles back to the front so um to do that we can use the num chords as my um a, 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 as a way to to get where the position on the circle and so the index that it's output by the uh, rightmost outlet of the uzi will be divided by the number of chords. So I can just do uh, divided by and use the same for this. And now I will have values that go from uh, 0 to 0.99. I'm going to prepend um, the slot value, the slot index, which is slot 3, remember? because lot three is my integer list and I need to have that prepended to my value, to my list, and then add the word at slot. So uh, that list needs to be wrapped in a set of parentheses so I can do a back wrap. I also need to select the chord and then uh, in order to do, uh, to add the slot to the selection. With clear selection, I will clear the selection, then the second message coming out of here would be cell chord and the voice index, which is one, and then uh, my variable uh, chord index. And then when I'm, done, when I'm done with that, I will um, uh, send the, the actual spatial data. So uh, as you can see, I have my list that is formed as the slot index and then um, the three values, the three integers. And if I go on to the note and press three, I will see how that's reflected there. So now my values are saved. Now, if I play this, I have all of my, the information that I want. Plus I have this list of uh, three integers that are, that's, and that's my uh, spatial data. So to get a little more uh, accurate in my spatial representation, uh, I can use the 14-bit resolution. We will use two CC slots. And it will use a CC slot that is offset 
by 32. So if I'm using uh, the CC's lot 20, which is what we used last time, um, to get a 14-bit uh, message, I will use the 20 and the 52 uh, CC. So I will have to use both. And the first one will be used as the integer part of the number. And the second one will be used as the, um, a float, the, the decimal part of the number. And both will have 128 resolution. Uh, and so the, the, whole, the maximum number that I can get in 14 bit is 16,384, which is the um, 128 at the power of two from zero to 127 and uh, scale it up to zero to um, 16384 maximum um, and that will be that will be my value and then I can get the integer part by dividing it by uh, 128 and I can get the decimal part by uh, using a uh, modulo 128 and notice how here I'm not using decimal points I actually want the uh, integer division and the modulo uh, division so uh, I need to do this uh, for each one of the three values and that then I can send over Reaper uh, using this simple scaling but I need to send it uh, so uh, a MIDI format is my the object that I'm going to use and if I want to send a um, if, if I want to send it on CC uh, 20 then I will need to have a CC 52 because the offset 52 because the offset is 32 uh, for the two uh, the two different CC slots Instead of using the stereo encoder this time, we're going to use the uh, room encoder, which is uses uh, Cartesian coordinates instead of spherical coordinates. And that it's a little more intuitive for what we're doing. So we can just get rid of this and then uh, add a new encoder. And we can just look for the room encoder. And then I can just change the mapping that now I have no mapping because I've deleted the effect that I was using to to do the um, uh, spatial encoding and I can first of all I can keep my channel to channel one and each track will have a different channel I can keep the CC to 20 so I will have 20 for the X dimension a 21 for the Y and 22 for the Z I want to check the 14-bit value so I, I can get more accuracy when I move objects around and I need to map it to the room encoder and uh, I want to map it to the source position so I said this would be um, this X dimension but the way that uh, the IEM plugins are structured um, the left and right dimension is actually the y dimension so i have to take care of that for the for the y the the my y would be um i will map it to the room encoder source position uh z which is the height uh in in the pl plugin mapping and and then for the for the Z dimension, again, I have to check the 14 bit. I can leave this as is. And then I need to check my, um, instead of mapping it to the track volume, I will track it to the FX parameter. And I my FX is gonna be the room encoder again. And uh, the um, parameter that I wanna map is, at this point, is the X, which is the depth. I wanna add a way of controlling the room size and the listener position so i can add six more mappings one two three one two three and um i want the room size to be the same for every channel um 
so I can go ahead and just pick um, channel 16, which I'm not using for um, in my voice mapping. And I can pick, I can keep using the 20 uh, to 22 for each um, XYZ coordinate. I just need to change the MIDI channel. I can check, tick the box of 14 bit for this as well. So channel 16, room encoder, room size, Y. And then again, um, channel 16, 21, 14 bit, room encoder, room size, Z for the height, 6, 16, 22, 14 bit, channel 16, room encoder, room size, X. And then I can go to the listener position. The listener position will be mapped on channel 15. Arbitrary, but this one channel that is not used by my other mappings. And then I just keep using the same CC indexes and I'm going to map it to listener position Y. Same. This is the room size. This is the listener position again. Map to channel 15, 21, room encoder, listener position Z. And finally, channel 15, CC 22, 14 bit, room encoder, listener position X. You can find this patch on my Patreon page where I'm sharing all of this work. You will find also the uh, sap patches like the, the furlough object, the 14-bit uh, utility, and many other things. So if you feel inclined to um, contribute to this channel and to my work, uh, do check that out. And uh, in case you can't, that's totally fine. You can let me know uh, in the comments if you, if you have some aspects of these videos that you enjoy and if you have questions um, do subscribe to this channel i'm trying to get to uh, 1000 subscribers i hope eventually that will happen